So we have the Giants Week 2 film breakdown video, the Giants against the Bills. The Bills took this one 28-14, of course. And um, if you guys want me to go other, like, over other plays around the NFL, like I think there's some fun plays that I can go over, whether it was like the Julio Jones screen pass to win Sunday Night Football or like the two-point conversion play in the Jacksonville game. I feel like going over some specific plays would be pretty fun. So if you guys want some plays, um, want me to go over some certain plays, let me know in the comments, and I'll gladly do so in a separate video. But right now, here we go. We have Saquon Barkley, his 27-yard touchdown. And I want you guys to watch right here. So we have Benny Fowler, Russell Shepard. They make some great seal blocks right here to create this lane for Saquon Barkley. They basically set these um, they set great blocks and create a lane for Barkley. So watch those guys and what they do right there. They create a lane. Tredavious White's one-on-one -on -one with Barkley. Barkley gets right by him and then takes the angle and beats the safety. So you can see it from this angle better how... Right here, the two receivers on the edge. Watch what they do right here. Great job by them. They create this hole, and Barkley can either bounce outside and probably get a touchdown, or he can go inside. I mean, I, I figured he would go outside. He decided to go inside, trusted his ability, and it worked, and then beats the safety, has the angle. Giants went up 7 nothing after this play. So when you go and watch this game back, there were a few, or I, probably more than a few, breakdowns and coverage once again. So the bottom of the screen right here, this guy's going to run like a wheel route and go down here and then run up the field. And he was basically unaccounted for on this play, so we'll watch what he does. And I'm not sure, honestly, if it was Ryan Conley's fault or DeAndre Baker's fault. Um, I believe this is zone defense we have here, and it seemed like Ryan Conley kind of expected right here. I don't know if Conley expected Allen to pass right here to this open receiver on, like, the check down. But this man right here is going to be unaccounted for, and we're going to see DeAndre Baker stick with this man who runs like a post route. And these two were defenders. I believe this is Jabril Peppers right here. Him and um, DeAndre Baker stick with the same guy, so something wrong is going on right there. So there's no reason two of these guys should be accounted for one receiver, and then we have an open bill right here. But luckily, Josh Allen did not have enough time to make this play. This was a sack by Marcus Golden. And we'll see what he did on the line here. But just, you know, it's another breakdown in secondary. It's not a good thing to see. We have Golden on the outside right here. And we'll see what he does with his pass rushing moves. I believe he, like, beat him on the outside. He did this a couple times this game. Yeah, he just went outside, got around. Josh Allen didn't see him coming and takes a whole village to bring Josh Allen down. But they did it. But, yeah, it's not a good to see. I mean, once again, just a breakdown and you know, guys not being in the right spot. So the Giants got lucky that time because the pass rush bailed them out. So here's a play that really killed the Giants. This was a, um, what do we have here, second and five. The Giants were up 7 nothing at this point. They were driving. I mean, they were, like, at midfield. Well, not they would have been at midfield if this was completed. So basically, Evan Ingram's going to run across the middle of the field. He was pretty open, I would say. I mean, his defender was a yard behind him. Pats went through his hands. I wasn't sure watching it live if the ball was too high or it went through Ingram's hands. But you can see from this angle right here that it pretty clearly goes through his hands. Got to move this bar, of course. So Eli puts it on him pretty well. Could have been a little lower, but yeah, you could see it goes through his hands. The ball is right here. So um, Evan Ingram's got to come down with this ball and, you know, Giants went in the third and six, I believe, after this, and they didn't convert. So, I mean, if they converted this and the Giants, you know, could have went up 10 nothing, 14 nothing, could have changed the um, momentum of this game. It's a shame as to what happened here, but it's the little things like this that will kill you on offense, and that's why the Giants have such a hard time converting and scoring touchdowns this season. So I believe this is the same drive, and we the Giants had a third and five. They had a false start, I believe, on TJ Jones. It made it a third and ten. And basically, Eli Manning had nowhere to go with this ball. I mean, if you watch the secondary, that everyone was basically covered for. They have one deep safety, obviously. The rest of it is man defense from the Bills, and they all did a great job of staying with their guy. Actually, what they did, okay, and this is pretty interesting. So they basically dropped this guy back to make it like two deep safeties. And this guy right here, who looked like a blitzer, drops back into uh, man coverage. That's actually pretty interesting right there by the Bills on defense. Nice job by their defensive coordinator. I don't know if Sean McDermott calls the plays or not, but whoever called that play, nice job. And Eli Manning basically, I mean, at this point, you kind of have to get rid of the ball. The clock's going off in your head. No one's open right now. I mean, there's three guys out for a pass. Nobody's open. I mean, all these guys are just blanketed at this point. And... Pass was wide to Latimer. We'll see if there was anything he could do with this ball, but it would have taken an absolutely pinpoint perfect throw, and it's a risky throw nonetheless, and, you know, little out of the reach of Latimer. So you can't blame Eli there. Just a great defensive play by the uh, Bills and a great play call as well. The Giants have had a rough time getting off the field on third down defensively this year. 
And here's another example why, so I don't know why I just did that, but it's going to be DeAndre Baker on Cole Beasley. So Beasley, I believe, is right here running in motion, and I think Baker's going to follow him, which tells you that it's man coverage. And for some reason, I mean, I don't know if it's the play design, but why is DeAndre Baker giving Cole Beasley like eight yards on this play? I mean, like Cole Beasley's not the type of receiver that's going to beat you deep. He's definitely good at cutting and, and that kind of stuff, but he's not going to beat you deep uh, too many times. I don't know why there's eight yards of cushion right here. That kind of annoyed me, but I don't know if that's part of the play or not. Cuts in, and DeAndre kind of slips, and they pick up a first down. Nice hands by Beasley on that catch. If you watch Baker... Right about here, you can see, I mean, he's in a position where he slips and had no momentum, and Beasley makes a nice catch, and we'll see from this angle if there was any sort of pass rush at all, but really there wasn't. Actually, there kind of was. Okay, so they ran a stunt here. Marcus Golden went around, had a pretty clear lane right here, but it just wasn't enough time to get to Josh Allen, and that's a great catch by Beasley. I mean, that ball's coming in hot. I'm sure everyone watching this video probably couldn't catch this ball, myself included. I mean, that is a very tough catch to make by uh, Cole Beasley right there. So here we have possibly another rookie mistake here by DeAndre Baker. Forget if this is the play with the play action. Okay, it is. So right here, watch DeAndre Baker on the bottom of the screen, number 27. He kind of bites on this play action right here, and it's his own defense. So DeAndre Baker should have been back around this area. And, you know, it's kind of watch the Norris Jenkins way he does. He's a veteran. He's not going to fall for it. He's back behind the 40, and DeAndre Baker's still at the 35. And I believe this, I don't know if it's this receiver or this receiver. It's, I think, Isaiah McKenzie thinks his name okay he comes down right here obviously no one in the area Josh Allen ready to throw but I think DeAndre Baker should have been way back here at this point you have Ryan Conley in this area so I believe he's in the wrong spot of the zone and there's, there's no reason why in zone defense these two should be like three yards apart from each other DeAndre Baker has to be back here in this area and because of that they have a wide open receiver um, on the left side of the field. So right there, just another rookie mistake. I do give him credit, though. At least he hit him down right there. You saw that, how he tapped him down. Um, a lot of time when college players come to the NFL, they don't touch guys like that because well, that sounded wrong, but they, they don't hit guys when they're down because in college, um, the play's blown dead. But in the NFL, you can obviously get back up if you're not touched yet. So that's a, a smart play by him, even though he was in the wrong spot on defense. So here we have the Josh Allen rushing touchdown. It was just a quarterback draw, basically. There's no intent to throw the ball here. You see they have their two offensive linemen and Frank Gore on the block here. And I honestly did not like the angle that Al Gogletree took to this play right here. So Conley and whichever cornerback this is, they're just, you know, taken out of the play. And I think Alec Ogletree should have done the safer thing and went underneath here. I understand he would have picked up a couple of yards, but it probably would have saved the touchdown. Ogletree goes on top, tries to get his feet. He fails, and Josh Allen goes to the end zone untouched. So, I mean, if you watch from this angle, you could watch Ogletree right here. And, you know, it's very tough to tackle Josh Allen. I've said it many times, but right here you have DeAndre Baker, I believe this is. I don't know if the, is that DeAndre Baker? I actually don't even know who it is, but it doesn't matter. So we have Ryan Conley in this corner getting knocked down here. And then, you know, Ogletree decides to take this route to him, and it's honestly just not going to work. I mean, Josh Allen's pretty darn fast, and he beats him around this corner. Ogletree probably should have went underneath here. He would have been facing Frank Gore uh, as a blocker, but still, I believe he could have made a play here and stopped him short of the end zone. So not what you want from your $11 million inside linebacker, but it is what it is. And because of that, the Bills um, put up six points on the board. So due to his arm strength and athletic ability, Josh Allen makes some plays that maybe a handful of quarterbacks can make, and this is kind of one of them. So basically, he ankle breaks a cornerback, an athletic cornerback in Grant Haley, and then goes on the run and makes a terrific pinpoint accurate throw. So Grant Haley right here, number 34, is going to come in on a, a slot corner blitz, come down here to try and sack Josh Allen. But look what Josh Allen does right here. It's, it's pretty impressive, honestly. Josh Allen's just a guy I love watching. Right there. I mean, like, he just makes some freeze. And, you know, when you're at this point right here, this should be a sack every time. I mean, this this um, offensive lineman is definitely laid out getting to getting to Haley. And, I mean, Josh Allen steps back, creates like an ankle breaker. Or not really an ankle breaker, but you know what I mean. And then makes a great pass, just pinpoint accurate to uh, the rookie tight end right there. That's just a great play. I mean, we'll watch from this angle. You could probably see it better. I'm just so impressed with Josh Allen sometimes. And if he can do this consistently, I mean, he would be one of the best quarterbacks in the football. And I still think he has that ceiling. I mean, look at that arm strength right there. That is a crazy throw that I'm telling you, only a handful of players in the NFL could probably make that play that Josh Allen just did right there. 
So the Giants got lucky here. We'll watch this play. It was Grant Haley, who I just talked about the last play, right here in the slot guarding John Brown, one of the faster receivers in this league. And it's man coverage. They have one deep safety. I don't know. I don't really know what Bethay was doing on this play. I haven't watched it back yet. But basically, Grant Haley gets beat by John Brown going deep on this play. And I mean, Bethay, I guess, didn't see it. And they had him for a touchdown. He had him by beat by at least a few yards on this play. And, you know, I don't know exactly what Bethay's doing because, you know, there's really no one else going deep. There's no one else that he's responsible for. I mean, right here you could easily tell that this receiver's cutting in and that he's going right to Alec Ogletree. So I don't know what Bethay was thinking here, but by the time he even retreats, I mean, John Brown is already way past both of these guys right here, whether it was Grant Haley or Antoine Bethay. But luckily for the Giants, he was overthrown by, you know, about five yards, but still could have been a big play. And, um, you know, the, the overthrow definitely saved the Giants defense right there. So I talked about the Giants third down defense before we have a third and 10 right here. Um, they're in the Giants. I think they're in the red zone, actually, on this play. Or they're pretty close. They're on the 26, it says. Okay, so, I mean, they're close to scoring. The Giants can hold them to a field goal right here. And once again, watch the rookie, DeAndre Baker, who is going to be on top of the screen. He's right here. He's responsible for Cole Beasley on this play. And they had him stop short of the sticks by a few yards. But, of course, I mean, Beasley just does a nice move and, and gets out of it. And, you know, DeAndre Baker punches the ground for good reason there. The Giants should have had him short of the sticks right there. He's at least a couple yards short right here. And, you know, you can see the missed tackle here by DeAndre Baker who kind of over-pursues the play right there. And then Beasley picks up a, a first down right there. So it's not good for the Giants defense. I mean, it's just stupid mistakes like that that keeps them on the field and, and all that kind of stuff. Not much of a pass rush here. and pretty clean pocket for Josh Allen. And, I mean, right there, I mean, you have a clear shot. His back is turned, and he makes a nice move, spins out of it basically. Never touched by DeAndre Baker and Bethay is there, but it's too late. Obviously past the first down marker here, so another not-so-good play by this giant secondary. So here we have a, a touchdown run by, I believe, Devin Singletary in the backfield here for the Bills. And it was just honestly some great blocking by the Bills' uh, offensive line on this play, so we'll watch what happens here. Watch number 77 take out Ryan Conley's legs right here and just take him out of the play. Awesome play right there. Takes Conley out. Right here, this block on DeAndre Baker. This block right here took out whoever that was. I think it was Jabril Peppers, actually. So I think Peppers is right here. We'll see what happens with him. He's taken out of the play easily, and then DeAndre Baker was taken out of it as well. I mean, I wish Baker did a better job of trying to get away from this block. I mean, I wish he, like, kind of cut outside right here, you know, like, kind of just moved out of here so that this offensive lineman wasn't able to grab hold of him and kind of make Singletary choose to cut back inside, and maybe Antoine Bethea had room to make this tackle. But instead, he just gets swallowed up by this tackle, and honestly, it wasn't even a block. He kind of just pushed him. The second time I looked at it here, he kind of just pushed him with his right arm right there. It was enough for Singletary to get to the end zone. It might have been Frank Gore. I honestly don't even know who that running back was, but we'll see if we see anything from this angle. Just, you know, awesome blocking by the Bills offensive line here. So take Peppers out of the play. Take Baker out of the play. Take Conley out of the play. And, you know, O'Shane out of the play. And right here, open lane, scores it. Six points for the Bills right there. So we have a special teams play, which we don't say too much about the Giants. There's honestly two special teams plays, so we'll see Antonio Hamilton, who I believe is down here as the gunner on the bottom of the screen, and he makes a tremendous play. If you watch the game, you already know what's going to happen right here. And his guy doesn't really block him, and, you know, he makes a great play. And look at this play right here. Somehow gets the ball to the two-yard line. Just an awesome play right there by Antonio Hamilton. So let's see, the ball bounces. Where was the ball? I don't even see it now. It's hard to see from this angle, honestly. I think the ball bounced around somewhere over here. Here's the shadow of it. And you can see right here, he grabs the ball. Feet are not in the end zone somehow and saves it from being a touchback. An awesome play. Saved the Giants like 18 yards on that play right there. So we're not, we don't talk about the Giants special teams too much because it's really nothing to talk about. But this was an awesome play. I love seeing stuff like this. And it's the stuff like this that would be a potential game-winning play in a tight ball game. So what does the Giants defense do with this great field position? Well, they get no pass rush, and Josh Allen has all day to scan the field in his own end zone. 
and makes a play to John Brown on the outside. So right here is where the ball is going. And honestly, I mean, this goes on the pass rush right here. I mean, Josh Allen had time to pump fake and finds a wide open John Brown. And this is the kind of stuff Janoris Jenkins was talking about in the post game, how we can't cover guys for like 10 seconds. So Janoris right here, you have to respect the speed of John Brown. Janoris is ready to go deep downfield thinking that John Brown's going deep, but he makes a nice move here, runs a comeback route or kind of a curl, I guess you can call it, and makes the catch and then gets him out of the end zone basically. So, I mean, if you watch Josh Allen from here, we'll count how many seconds he had to make a throw. So right here. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Almost like four seconds, I would say, to make that throw. That's way too much. And you know, the Giants sent Alec Ogletree on a blitz. I believe Jabril Peppers came in on a blitz. Or no, maybe not. But still, I mean, they sent a linebacker. And, you know, it was just too much time for a quarterback, especially in his own end zone. He looked way too comfortable on that throw. And it's, you know, that, that's how the Bills got off the two-yard line after that great move, or that great play, I should say, by Antonio Hamilton. So on plays like this, it's tough to decide whose fault it really was on like a zone defense type of play like this. And I mean, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm pretty sure it was DeAndre Baker making a mistake on this play. This was a gain of about like 40 or 50 yards to Cole Beasley. And we see him right down here on the screen. No one's around him. And, you know, I think at this moment right here, I mean, I don't know. I think Antoine Bethea probably should have been, you know, where he's at right now. And, I mean, the middle of the field is kind of accounted for by these two players on the Giants right here, Bethea and whoever this is. And DeAndre Baker right here is staying with the tight end. But right behind him, he has Cole Beasley. So he's kind of in a bad spot right now. I think what should have happened was I think Baker should have been, you know, worried about um, Cole Beasley more than the seam route up here. But, I mean, there's really – it's a one-on-two situation. It's kind of pick your poison for DeAndre Baker. So I really don't know who exactly to blame for this play. But he was way too open there. No one around him. And it's just another breakdown in the Giants' second. It was way more than 40 yards, I'll tell you that. I forgot how much he gained that for the catch. So, I mean, look, I, I really don't know who to blame exactly for this. I mean, it is his own defense, and, you know, I do believe that I don't know why Baker was all the way up here. He probably should have been down here more, which is the area that Beasley's in. So, hate to blame the rookie again, but that's probably where we're going with this. So, I mean, just it's plays like this that'll kill you, and it just happens way too much to this Giants defense. So, no, this is not a replay of last time when Devin Singletary had that easy touchdown. This time it's Isaiah McKenzie on, like, a little, I don't even know what you call this play, a little tap pass from Josh Allen there. And just great blocking by this tight end here. I believe it's the rookie tight end. I forget his name, but some Bills fan commented that that's a rookie number 88. Making a great block on Jabril Peppers, and he just could not shed that block. But, you know, at this point right here, the Giants have, like, you know, there's the whole defensive or the whole, the whole offensive line for the Bills is blocking over here. The Giants have one, two, three, four defenders just unaccounted for and just it took them a, a long time to have play recognition and know who had the ball in this play and he goes in untouched I mean it's just way too easy this is what happens with bad defenses and honestly I mean on a play like this you should not go in untouched I understand it's a tricky play because the defense probably thinks it's a handoff to the running back some trickery here but it's just way too easy Jabril Peppers has to find a way to get off this block as well that's just way too easy for the tight end right there to block him so I mean they got to work on that kind of stuff just way too easy and you know, it's, it's that kind of stuff that kills this Giants defense. So the next play I had was an Eli Manning interception, his first one on the day. But you know what? I'm, I'm not in the mood to talk about Eli Manning's interceptions right now. I mean, I'm more in the mood of just, like, looking at the positives of this man's career, considering he probably won't ever start a game for the Giants again. But right here we have TJ Jones on a 60-yard punt return. And, you know, there's really not much to talk about here. It's just a nice return. I mean, I was pretty sad when TJ Jones got cut the first time. I believe he should have made this team off the bat. But we'll see from this angle right here um, what kind of angles he takes. So where is he at? Okay, so he retreats to get the ball here. There's just a wide open lane right here. And I don't know why this defender didn't make the tackle, but we'll go on to see. Um, yeah, I, I don't – what is he doing? Like, wait, what? This was actually terrible. <laughs> Whoever this guy is on the Bills right here needs to get fired or really, I don't know what the hell he's, like, he's literally in a position to make, he looked like he was blocking 
unless the, I, I really don't know what's going on right here, but this defender for the Bills easily should, should have been in this lane and made this not happen. But he looked like he was blocking the giant player and forgot what team he was on for a second. Gets by the punter, had one more man to beat, but could not do it. And uh, the Giants get 60 yards on that punt return. So a great job by TJ Jones right there. Whatever Bills special teams player that was, I mean, you, you need to get off the team. I don't know what the <laughs> This honestly makes me laugh. Like, what is he doing? I mean, right here, you have a great angle. The ball's right here, and you're right here. Why aren't you, like, getting in the lane? Like, what are you doing? He's basically blocking. I think this is O'Shane. Like, what? Uh, this this made those, I don't know. I have nothing to say about that anymore. That's just crazy. So here's the Olsen Pierre sack. I don't know if it's his first sack on the Giants. I know he had one in the preseason, probably his first regular season sack as a Giant. And the, this play was blown dead way too easily, way too fast, I should say. And the Giants should have had a fumble on this play, but they did not get it because the refs were way too quick with the whistles here. So Olsen Pierre is number 72. I think he's right here. Yep. Goes around the line and makes a great play, and the Giants wrap a ballon. He loses the ball here before he was down, and of course the refs blow the whistle for some odd reason. He wasn't even down yet, and they blew the whistle. I mean, I saw that way too much this weekend around the NFL, that referees just blow the whistle way too early. I mean, there's situations now where quarterbacks will get out of the play, but they already called the play dead, and it's, it's kind of crazy. So right here, we have a sandwich right here, and Josh Allen's in a bad spot, and Olsen Pierre basically grabs his jersey. Marcus Golden's there as well. And Olsen Pierre is able to knock the ball out right around this moment. But the play is already blown dead. You see the referee with his hand up, play is blown dead. It was just a stupid just a stupid decision by these referees right here. So the Giants were screwed out of a fumble. But on the bright side, it's nice to see the pass rush got better this week. And hopefully that improves over the rest of the season. So a rare bad play by Kevin Zeitler here giving up a sack number 70. The Giants right guard. And we'll see what happens because I honestly forget what happens on this play, so I'm watching it with you guys. And, yeah, I mean, he just gets around them. I mean, there's really not much to say here. He kind of just beats him with the hands and just gets by him easily. He wasn't moving his feet very well, Kevin Zeitler. Not very good technique, which is hard to say about him because usually he looks great on the line, but didn't happen right there. Eli Manning can't get out of it and gets sacked. He lost the ball, but I think Zeitler fell on it. I don't know if it was Zeitler or somebody else, but some, some Giants offensive lineman fell on this ball, so it wasn't a turnover, but still... Um, the offensive line has to be a little better than that. But look, compared to how bad the Giants line's been in the last few years, you have to be very grateful for what we have right now. So if it's only one bad play per game, I can live with that. So I gave Josh Allen his credit before the Bills quarterback, how he makes some plays that a lot of quarterbacks can't make. But this is a play that he has to make. And I'm assuming some Bills fans are going to watch this, which is why I put this video in here. So what's going to happen on the Giants defense here? The, the middle of the field is going to be open, or I should say like the linebacker area right here. This entire area is open. So you're going to see, I think, Grant Haley right here who is Zay Jones' man. This looks like man defense from this formation here, but he's going to blitz, and Marcus Golden's going to blitz. So this entire side of the field is open, or the entire middle of the field right here is open, and a very simple-looking throw, but he throws right behind Zay Jones. And, I mean, if Josh Allen's ever going to be one of those elite top 10, top 5 quarterbacks in the NFL, he has to make this throw. I mean, he had a great game today, and it's I'm just, you know, I'm pointing out the one bad thing. The footwork isn't great, obviously, but, you know, you have to make this throw. The ball goes behind Zay Jones. You can see it right there. There's the ball. There's Zay Jones reaching back for it. It's just a very simple throw. I mean, like, there's a lot of people that yell at the TV like, oh, I can make that throw. I, I honestly think I could have made this throw. I'm not a great quarterback, but still, I mean, it's, it's stuff like that that, like, Josh Allen, like, it kind of annoys you when you watch him, but... If he fixes this kind of stuff, the, the simple things, he can honestly be a great quarterback, so we'll see if he fixes it. This is he, I don't think he's played a full 16 games yet in the NFL, so it really shouldn't be too hard on him, but we'll see if he improves as the season goes on. It's rare to say this year, but the Giants from the secondary to the pass rush played a great play on defense right here. Everyone is uh, you know basically covered up. Every receiver for the Bills is covered up. It's a man defense, and they get to Josh Allen very fast. I wouldn't call this a coverage sack, quote-unquote, but like still... When Josh Allen is up right here, there's really nobody open at this point, whether it's here, here, here. I don't know if I said here or not. I mean, kind of open right here, but still. It's a really nice play by the secondary, staying with their men. And then Josh Allen goes down by O'Shane Zimenez and Marcus Golden. I think Golden was given 
the sack on this play, and I think O'Shane got like half a sack. We'll watch them. I think O'Shane is right here, and Golden's right here. So watch the edge guys on the Giants' pass rush. Once again, Golden beats his man. Oh, they didn't, no, he didn't beat him. I mean, Josh Allen stepped up in the play, and it's it's tough for an offensive tackle right here with his back turn. And then Josh Allen steps up, and he has two Giants defenders coming right at him. And they get to him in time, luckily, and Josh Allen goes down pretty quickly that time, which is rare, but it happens. So a nice job by the Giants secondary and their pass rushers on that play. This might possibly be the last touchdown pass in Eli Manning's career, and if it is, it's a great one. It's TJ Jones in the back of the end zone. Eli puts it in a perfect spot. I do think Eli Manning's going to play at some point this year, probably like the last game of the season. Hopefully J Daniel Jones is good and they don't have to pull him, but I think he will get a drive on the last home game or something, so I don't think this is his last touchdown possibly, but it could be. And you see he's given a lot of time and, and makes a perfect throw to TJ Jones in the back of the end zone. We'll see from the other angle what he was working with here. So the offensive line looked pretty good on this play. Really nothing I can say. I mean, yeah, the offensive line was great on this play. I mean, Will Hernandez, this guy, kind of gets by him right here and was kind of late getting over to him. But I think Eli was given enough time to make a throw here. So there's, you know, one-on-one. -on -one, and he puts it in a good spot, high enough for the cornerback not to get it. And he comes down with a touchdown for TJ Jones. So right there could possibly be Eli Manning's last touchdown pass. I don't think this is the last time he sees the field, but it is possible that's his last NFL touchdown pass. So here's a play where the score was 21-14. The Giants are still in a one-possession game, nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. And this was a play that probably should have been an interception. Alec Ogletree gets a piece of the ball or Josh Allen's arm. He's right here, number 47. You'll see when Josh Allen goes to throw this ball, he gets a piece of it. Ball is up in the air, and it falls right between two Giants defenders right here, Antoine Bethea and DeAndre Baker. And if this was an interception, it could have changed the momentum of this game. Not saying the Giants would have went down and scored, but this would have been a huge play. I think this is the same drive where Dexter, Lawr Dexter Lawrence had that unnecessary roughness call on the center, and then Frank Gore scored a touchdown. So if the Giants had an interception here, they could have possibly went down and tied this game. But it's just little things like that where you have to make plays like this. I'm not saying it's anyone's fault. It's just unfortunate that that ball is very high in the air and fell right between two Giants defenders. So it sucks they didn't get there. But if they made this play, this could have been a very um, a much closer game, I should say. And yet another impressive throw here. This is a third down and six by Josh Allen. And he almost breaks B.J. Hill's ankles on this play and just makes another terrific play. I mean, he is so fun to watch. I know I say it a lot, but he really is so fun to watch. Rolls out there, makes a throw to an open John Brown, hits him in stride. That's a really great throw, but you watch it from this angle. So watch B.J. Hill, number 95 right here, who somewhat has a clean shot at Josh Allen. But he is way too elusive and way too nifty and gets out of this. Watch him right there. B.J. Hill almost like falls backwards. Getting chased by Olsen Pierre, but, you know, Janoris Jenkins could not cover Brown across the whole field. Just a great play by Josh Allen, and I'm telling you, if I was a Bills fan, I'd be so excited for this kid's future. You're 2-0, possibly can make the playoffs this year, so, I mean, they're in a good spot right now, the Bills, and if Josh Allen keeps getting better week by week, they might make a deep playoff run this year. They definitely have the defense for it. It all depends on Josh Allen and how much he can improve in 2019. So we've seen a few rookie mistakes by DeAndre Baker in this game. Well, here's Dexter Lawrence's rookie mistake right here. So I believe he's right here. And you can see the um, the linebacker here, David Mayo, the new giant, tells him to not be over the center because that's a new rule in the NFL. Apparently, you can't really interfere with the center. I just think it's a dumb rule, honestly. I mean, he's still part of the team. I mean, why can't you hit the guy? It makes no sense to me. So just for that, Dexter Lawrence gets flagged. You can see the ref was all over it. Giants get a penalty and give the Bills a new set of downs, and it basically made the Bills go up 28-14 uh, to 14 instead of 24-14. Uh, to 14. So it's just a stupid call, honestly. I mean, we have 97. Dexter Lawrence, you see the ball is height. I mean, what does he really do wrong here? You know what I mean? Like, it's they said blow to the head, but he really was not hitting the head. I mean, it's just a dumb call in my opinion. I don't know why they have that rule in place, but it is the rules, and you got to gotta obey them. So it is what it is. I mean, this is the last play I have right now. I had a couple more Eli Manning plays that weren't so good, but as I said, we're not criti we're not critiquing Eli Manning this week. I'm, I'm not doing it. I mean, we're past that um, on the Daniel Jones now. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments. And uh, as always, I'll talk to you guys next time.